We're here with Dan Tamborello and Bill Cahill, two co-chairs of the Rick Santorum for President campaign here in New Hampshire. You guys are all smiles today. Oh yeah. I, I, I was uh, talking with Bill earlier and uh, you guys are feeling pretty chipper about your chances out here today. Yeah, the great thing is, is we get to maintain our momentum coming out of Iowa and we don't have any of the drawbacks to being a front runner. I mean, of course, we're getting attacked by Ron Paul types for the most part, but uh, you know what we do here, it's all it's all good going down to South Carolina, and we really like our chances. And there really was a three-state strategy for Rick Santorum. It was literally months and months ago developed the strategy, which was Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, for obvious reasons. We're not a 50-state strategy. We weren't looking ahead to Florida or, or other large state primaries. Um, but he made a commitment. I think what's happened in the last week has validated his commitment to do the kind of retail politics, grassroots, on the ground, town hall by town hall. He visited 99 counties in Iowa. No other candidate can say that. Michelle Bachman, who is now out of the race, she claims she did it, but she didn't. Um, he's visited all 10 counties in New Hampshire. 150 town hall meetings over a period of 40, 40 days he's visited the state, uh, and it works. And like like Dan said, if we can continue to ride that wave that came out of Iowa last Tuesday night, keep the momentum going. His name ID has risen dramatically in the last week. His fundraising has, has been fabulous since you know, early last week, the week before last. Um, it's all starting to happen for him, and I know we're gonna we're gonna be the bridge for him to get to South. Carolina, where he will do extremely well. The polling out of there now has him a close second to Mitt Romney. He's within the margin of error. He is. 27-24, I think yeah, I saw right. the last uh, Rasmussen. Yeah, yeah, typical margins of error are 4-7%. to 7%, Yeah, 4-4.5% so. on Rasmussen, yes. Yeah, and he'll have the resources coming out of here to do what he needs to do with paid media, you know, electronic media, television, radio, which he did not have the benefit of in either Iowa or New Hampshire. Um, and then see where it takes it from there. It's state by state, sort of brick by brick, building the platform to go national. I can tell you right now, Rick Santorum is going to the convention in Tampa. He's going to be a player. He's in the game. It's our job as part of his team, not only here in New Hampshire, but nationally, to help him move the ball off the field. That's right. Let's we'll talk about tonight. Let's talk about the expectations game. Because, of course, this is the big thing for all of us here in Radio Row today is the expectations game. You know, Mitt Romney, we had Debbie Washington Schultz here earlier. I don't know if you saw him. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we saw her. Yeah, okay. we saw her. She's Can't telling uh, WBZ <laughs> that, well, if Romney doesn't get 50%, he's done. And, uh, you know, I think it's a little extreme, but I have a similar she, expectation. She, she also yeah. said all the Republican candidates are extreme Tea Party. Yeah, so, yeah she, well, there you go. She so. has a lot to say she's, about a lot of she's stuff. She's got a lot of rhetoric and <laughs> short on substance. Uh, but I can tell you, you know, along that same vein, I, I think, you know, what, what I've been saying, it, you know, a good showing for Romney is above 40%. Uh, if he falls below 30%, he's on life support uh, because this is, remember, this is a state he has 100% name recognition. He's been campaigning here since prior to the 2008 primary. He's been writing checks out of his own checkbook. He's been living in his mansion up on Lake Winnipesaukee. You know, and and if Mitt Romney can't connect the people of New Hampshire and get get over 40%, he has a serious, serious credibility problem. And let's, let's look at the inverse of that. 60 to 70 percent of the Republican Party is not approving, even if he does get of uh, uh, get that amount of Mitt Romney. So I mean, that to me is something to be be scared of if I'm on the Romney campaign. What's the expectation for Rick Santorum tonight? What's a good What's a good outcome for Rick Santorum tonight? Boy, if we could finish third or above, that would be fabulous. Yeah. That would be a, a, a great a great validation of the kind of strategy and the campaigning he's done here. You know, you remember, three, four weeks ago, he was at 2% in the polls in New Hampshire. Right. If he finishes in the mid to high teens today, that's a touchdown. It's, it's like, it's a W. It vaults us into, into South Carolina. You know, everybody knows he's not going to finish first. We don't have any expectation of that. Second is kind of squishy right now. Everybody talks about Ron Paul, but his numbers have been in decline for the last 72 hours. Oh, who knows? And I've worked in enough of these primaries in New Hampshire over the years to know that nobody knows. Right. The polls don't reflect what people are going to do when they pull that curtain behind them and mark the ballot. Right. And you have Rasmussen today, and we were talking about this earlier, but we have Rasmussen today showing, really talking about margins of error, a four-place tie for second place. Right. A four-way tie for, for second. second. 
for right, second, second for second place. Between 17 and 13 percent, you've got four candidates. Or 17 right. to 12 percent, so you've right. got four candidates. Right. right. Uh, in Suffolk, the, you're the first uh, person to point that out to me, by the way, other than me pointing How's it out to someone you else. Feel? Yeah, so there's actually somebody paying attention. So good on you. No, thank you. I, 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 I'm pretty careful about parsing uh, polls. <laughs> Because I've been burned a couple of times by you. Won't, you won't charge us for that information. Yeah. Right? I'm not going <laughs> to charge. No, this is free for all. There you it's go. Hot it's air. The, it's in the public yeah. square. It's, right? That's right. it. That's right. Exactly. Uh, Suffolk poll, tracking poll, Sunday, Monday survey showed Santorum in third place. Right. Uh, 13 percent, I believe. 13. Yeah, 13. And, uh, that's about right on. Yeah. And Paul was 17 percent. That's think? correct. Yeah. And so, uh, Romney was, uh, I think, 37 or 38 yeah. percent. Yeah. Paul. Uh, so third place, uh, a good finish for absolutely. For we think so. Yeah, we'd be absolutely. elated. If that would be it. great. That would be great. Third place. Um, and and considering, I I got to tell you, this has been the most unbelievable week in politics that I've ever spent. Uh, it's it's been. I had, a, I had a mentor many years ago named Lee Atwater from South Carolina, and he said the hottest thing in presidential politics is a phenomenon. And right now, Rick Santorum is the phenomenal candidate in this race. Everybody knows Mitt. Everybody knows Newt. Ron Paul's got his own niche carved out. Rick Perry's nowhere to be found. I mean, he's a phenomenal candidate, and he's he's on the ascendancy. He's on the rise, and his numbers, his trends just continue to go up this way. And the beautiful thing is, is that Rick Santorum is the same person today as he was 20 or 30 years ago. He doesn't have any problem trying to defend for, defend his record or answer it because it's entirely consistent. I don't think any of the other candidates can say that, except for maybe Ron Paul. But that's that's an entirely different animal in itself. So. You know, Rick, his ability to connect with voters, you know, on a personal basis, to, to look them in the eye, they know that they're talking to a real human being, he's got blue-collar credibility, Mitt Romney can't buy blue-collar credibility even if he had all the money in the world. So tonight, the place to be is going to be... Dairyfield Country Club, Rick Santorum for President, Victory Party. What are we starting around? Seven o'clock. I think it's around seven. The polls close at seven. So it's going to be, it's going to be. I tell you, we had a great party Tuesday night. Tonight's going to be just as good or better. I think the uh, you were telling me this earlier. You think that the uh, the uh, the camera crews are going to show up in the middle of the middle of the evening and start parking the. No, no. I think I think the satellite tracks are already parked there. Oh, there you and go. It's, okay. it's only midday on and Tuesday. And I don't know if you've seen Rick out on the campaign trail. It has been an absolute mob scene. We've had people throwing us out of buildings because we're violating fire. Code. So. <laughs> You, and, and, the, and the great thing is, the Lord has blessed us with beautiful weather, so he goes outside and he gets on an elevated platform of some sort, be it a pickup truck, a rock, or a soapbox, and he just does his spiel, and people walk away with signs and stickers, usually going in there thinking they're going to vote for Mitt Romney, and they come out saying, Rick Santorum is the guy that can beat Barack Hussein Obama in the general election. All right, gentlemen. Well, good luck tonight. Thanks for your time, and uh, might see you out there at Jerry Field Country Club. Good. Excellent. Thanks for having us. Look forward to it.